everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've given the hauls and the unboxings a bit of a rest for this video. I thought I'd do a Q&A because I saw Sammy and Leanne doing these really cool Snapchat Q&As and I thought that it was a really great way to get you guys like interactive in my videos. So I think this is going to be so much fun. Snapchat really is one of my favourite platforms at the moment because you do really see the people that you follow for who they really are. There's no editing and blah 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 so it really is just like real time, real life and it's kind of like where you you get to to see everyone in their day-to-day -day life away from like the Instagram editing and stuff like that so yeah it's really my favorite app at the moment it just seemed like the perfect opportunity to do another Q&A video because I don't think that I've done one since the summer so yeah this would be a nice chance to do that um, I'm just gonna open all of them and then if the video gets too long I'll just like feature the best ones but basically I asked you to snap me absolutely anything I wanted you to like think outside of the box a little bit because Everyone can ask like what makeup are you wearing or what's your favourite lipstick or what do you do in the gym but I wanted to answer some like different questions, maybe some risque questions, I don't know. We're going to have to see what they are because I have no idea what you've been sending me. Um, I have another camera to my right and that's going to be capturing the videos so just bear with me because this is really really weird filming with two cameras and two different angles but hopefully I'm going to capture everyone perfectly. If at all you do want to follow me on Snapchat I have popped my name below but it is just simple Lydia E. Millen, um, the same on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. The only place that it's different is here because I never knew I was going to start a YouTube channel. Let's get into the questions. Okay, so first up we have a question from Harry James Wild. Okay, I've got a question. So, if you were doing um, YouTube vlogging, um, what would be your job be? Um, I'm yeah. So Harry James Wild asked, if I wasn't doing YouTube and vlogging, what would my job be? Well, before I did this, I worked for a fashion brand at head office and I was their e-commerce manager. So I kind of guessed that maybe I would be something doing the same kind of thing, but maybe in a different business. Um, I don't know. Now that I do this, I can't ever imagine doing anything else. So yeah, it's weird to think that I used to do that. But no, I absolutely love my job now. So yeah, I can't imagine doing anything else. <laughs> okay, so question number two is from Laura Jackson 22 Love you, by the way. Love your channel, love your vlog. Um, I want to know, what's the one thing that you can't live without? Okay, so what is the one thing that I can't live without? Oh, this is going to make me seem so sad now, but I just think... That it, I guess it kind of leads on from my first question, but I love my job so much that I couldn't live without my phone because it kind of keeps me connected with everyone and what's going on in the world, but also what's going on in my little world and... Yeah, so I, I feel really, really naked without my phone. And that's just me being honest. You can think I'm sad all you want, but my everything like revolves around my phone. My life, my friendships, my job, everything. So I guess that, yeah, I'd be pretty lost without my phone. Um, obviously, I couldn't live without things like Ali and Lumi. And I think that that goes without saying. So you don't have to like say, what about Ali? But if it's a like material thing, I would definitely have to say it's my phone. Okay, so question number three is from Evita Kat. Let's see what she has to say. Hey Lydia, I really wanted to ask you what is your favorite movie and what types of movies do you love to watch? Love you. Okay, that's a good one. <laughs> That is a really good question actually. As far as films go, oh it's so difficult because I just, I get caught up in most movies and like the emotion behind them. So I end up thinking that all of the movies that I see are my favourites. But I do have a type of video that I don't like, a type of movie that I don't like. Um, and that actually was really like, <laughs> I went and saw one of those recently. I don't know whether, if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen that I went and saw The Revenant. What I do not like seeing is I don't like seeing people suffer. I don't like seeing animals suffer. And I don't like a lot of violence. Like, it's just not something that I think that is enjoyable. I don't enjoy watching it. it. That's not my idea of a good night. I understand that there was a big artistic vision behind The Revenant, but... For me, it was just way too much. And when I left the cinema, I absolutely cried my eyes out because I just couldn't handle it. It's not something that I find enjoyable and it was actually quite upsetting. 
So um, I only sat there through it because we were with like loads of our friends and I didn't want to be the party people that was like, I can't watch this. So I suffered it, but I had my eyes closed for a lot of it. So yeah, I don't really have like a favourite film. I, there's so many films that I love, but what I don't love is suffering and violence. Definitely not. <laughs> okay, so question number four is from Charlotte Co UK. Hi Lydia, Charlotte Davis here. Right, if you could only ever post on one social media platform ever again, Insta, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever, which would you choose? Oh my god, <laughs> these questions are so good. Okay, I would have to say if I could only post on one social media channel again, I would probably say YouTube because it still feeds that like need that I have to be a little bit creative and a little bit like, sorry, <laughs> oh lums. But yeah, it's still, it makes me a person because I think that sometimes people forget on like, on places where you just share pictures that you're actually a person. So it'll still show my personality and things like that and also the things that I love but whilst also giving me the ability to be like creative all the time which I quite enjoy so yeah I think I would have to say YouTube which is funny because that's like the newest thing that I do but I kind of feel like it ticks all of the boxes okay so question number six I'm so gonna lose count face moisturizer love from Hong Kong oh, okay I think that was what's my favorite face moisturizer um, I use the um, creme de la mer moisturising cream quite a lot I know that it's really expensive but whenever I feel like I need like a surge of moisture especially when I've been like in London and places like that my skin gets so dry because I'm not drinking enough water because I'm like here there and everywhere and I worry that there's no toilets so whenever I've been in London I automatically come and put that on my face but I know that it's expensive and there might be some other options I think I'm going to look into it to find like some other options for you guys that are just as good as that one but maybe not quite so expensive <laughs> Question number seven from Lily. L well, it's like Lily with loads of L's. <laughs> Hi Lydia. Hi from Australia. Sorry, I'm in my pajamas. It's 11 o'clock here at night. I was just wondering, will you ever come to Australia and what's your favorite tea? Oh, and also, what's your favorite part about being British? And <laughs> what's your favorite British TV show? Am I ever gonna come to Australia? Well, I think someone snapped me this the other day when they were like, if you hate spiders that big, don't come to Australia. I think that that's mainly why I haven't been, although I do know that my audience is quite big in Australia as well. So it would be nice to come over there now that I've like done a long haul flight as well and I'm not so scared to fly anymore. That's definitely somewhere that I would like to visit. And then, oh, I can only remember the other one. I think it was what's my favorite part about being British. Um, I just love England. Like I really, really love England as a country. I feel like we get the best of both worlds. We do get really nice summers and then we also get really cold winters and we get to see all the different seasons. And so I definitely say that I just love like Britain and its seasons and it's like climate and stuff like that because I just think that it's quite nice to have those changes and um but still have a little bit of summer i love england i do i really do love england <laughs> oh and i think she asked what my favorite tea is okay at the moment my favorite tea changes all the time but at the moment it is white tea from harrods and i put a slice of lemon in it and it's just so nice i literally fill up my tea flask with it and i just drink the whole bottle in the morning because it's just so so nice and a little slice of lemon is a really good way to like kick start your uh, metabolism so yeah that's my favorite tea at the moment but that will always change <laughs> So question number eight, I think, is seven or eight. I'm just gonna keep saying numbers. <laughs> this is from FBNE. What is your number one rule in life? Oh, what is my number one rule in life? Oh, okay, so my number one rule in life is probably just to always be a good person. I think that the world gets caught up with looking like a good person, but it's really important for me to be as good on the inside as anything that I might be on the outside um, because I like good people and I try and surround myself with good people rather than a lot of people. It's definitely just to be a good person and um, that's all I can ever ask for. If I'm at like a success, that's great, but I just want to be a good person. The next question is from Miss Beauty. What's my favourite clothes shop? I think that that was her son. My favourite clothes shop is, well, say High Street, I would have to say H&M because their price point is just so, so good 
and their designs and the quality of their, their items are really good. I like Zara, but I always find my stuff from Zara gets like holes in. Then sort of like premium high street at the moment, well, I found, I went to Club Monaco yesterday and wow, that store is like my spirit animal. It's so beautiful and just so like, stunning and the pieces oh my god I could have spent a fortune in there but I need to go back and buy more stuff it was so beautiful so at the moment I really like that and Jigsaw Jigsaw is really good at the moment and then high end I'd probably say I spend a lot of time in Selfridges um, but also I think that Fenix on Bond Street now that it's had this big revamp it's just really really nice so um, if you haven't checked out Fenix on Bond Street I definitely suggest that you do because it's beautiful and then you have to have lunch in Bond and Brook the next question is from Emma Jade Ray. Hey Lydia, I'm just wondering what you do to relax or what you enjoy doing when you're not blogging, like walking. I like doing a lot of stuff to relax. Um, I actually find going to the gym very relaxing because afterwards I'm like zonked. Um, and I feel like it's a really good outlet for like negative energy. When I go and like kick the crap out of a punch bag, I'm like, this is so good. Um, but then on a more like zen level i'd say i absolutely love yoga i go to the white space studio in sony stratford and i do their energize and revitalize class and it's just so relaxing but then i also really love spa trips like spas are my thing i am obsessed if ever i want to do like a getaway with like my friends or ali i want to go to a spa place because that is like where I feel most relaxed and most pampered. It's nice to like schedule in some me time. Okay, the next question is from theblackp.uk. You just wanted to ask, do you and Ali ever get jealous about like guys and girls texting you or writing under your pictures and stuff? Or does it just come with the territory? Have you gotten used to it? That's such a good question. This is something that crops up quite a lot at like events or if me and Ali go to events together. But obviously Ali is a fairly good looking guy. I mean, and he gets a lot of attention from females and also men, which is really funny. His audience is like a 50-50 split of male and female, whereas his mine is like predominantly female. So I don't know whether he has to deal with it as much as I do in terms of like on the internet, but Ali gets a lot of attention online, but I think it comes down to the person that you're actually with and how they deal with it. And Ali is so respectful and so like, just kind of disinterested in it. He, he's obviously lovely when girls wanna come and have like pictures taken with him or even if guys wanna have pictures taken with him, he's fine with that. But yeah, I mean, I think as long as you're respectful to the other person and you do everything to ensure that you, you're not doing anything wrong, people can send you what they want and say what they want, but you just deal with it and you're just very like understanding I think that that's fine and you're never ever going to feel like worried or insecure because they're handling it in a really respectful way so next question is from Mayela Mayeli one Mayel one I don't know <laughs> hi Lydia I really like the lighting that you use in your videos you're such a good blow and ambiance um where do you get it from um and could you tweet a link or something that Okay, so the lighting that I use in my video is actually really, really simple. Like, I have no lights on in my room at the moment. I have this backlight from my computer. I have a window to my left, which is actually a really nice sunny day today, but I've kind of blocked up half the window so that I don't get a shadow across my face because I actually have nowhere, like, facing... I didn't have a good backdrop to, like, face the window. So what I did was I bought a ring light because we don't really have enough space in um, my office. Hopefully when we get a new place I'll have a bigger office and I'll be able to have like a proper setup. But at the moment I just use a ring light from Amazon and they ended up giving it to me for free because they delivered about three of them and they all broke. So this one luckily hasn't broke yet. Okay, so the next question is from John Sorry. Far from spiders. What are you scared of? <laughs> oh my god, okay. So apart from spiders, what am I scared of? I am scared of so much stuff. I am scared of like a lot of bugs. I just don't really like bugs in general. I'm scared of dogs, like big dogs. I don't really like big dogs. I'm fine with little dogs. Deep water, I'm scared of frogs. I'm scared of flying. So yeah, I'm scared of quite a lot of things to be honest. I know that I'm a bit of a scaredy cat, but yeah. <laughs> okay, next question is from, oh I can't say these names, Iowa? I don't know, Iowa1210. Hi Lydia, um, my two questions are, did people laugh about you when you started your blog? That's a really good question and something that I've talked about a lot on my blog actually, 
is the way that people were when I started my blog. So many people laughed, even my friends laughed. People said that I had too much time on my hands, people just thought that I was, you know, just made fun of me if I was out with my friends, people would be like, go and take another selfie, and things like that, and it was just, it wasn't very nice, and it's funny now to look back because, you know, I just, I didn't listen to it and I didn't take it on board, but if I had, and I hadn't stuck on my blog, that really, like, sticks with me. Like, what if those people had moulded my outcome in life? Imagine if I'd never, ever stuck at my blog, or imagine if I never even started it, and that, to me, oh my god, I think my life would have, would have lacked so much substance, and it's just, it, it really upsets me when people do that, and people laugh at you for things that you're doing out of passion, because they're just too scared to do their own thing, so, for me personally, I would never, if someone laughs at you for doing anything, don't ever, ever listen to them, because, it could have shaped my life in the worst way possible, so just don't listen to negativity like that, whatever you do. So the next question is from Sean Awesome. Hi, from Sicily. Just wanted to know if you could meet any celebrity, musician, author, anyone, dead or alive, who you would choose and why? Ooh, I think I would probably meet the Red Hot Chili Peppers because I was, like, I think, I feel like they shaped my musical taste a lot growing up. Um, I also read the lead singer's autobiography and yeah I just feel like they had such an influence on how diverse my musical taste was and I'm pretty sure that Under the Bridge is probably one of the most like pinnacle songs of my life. I've never tired of it, it honestly is, it just always gives me goosebumps and yeah so I would absolutely love to meet the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Okay so next question is from Georgina NM. Hi, I watch your Snapchat religiously and um, you're literally goals. I was just wondering how you like keep in shape. Oh that makes me laugh so much, I'm goals. <laughs> That's so nice. Um, okay, I tend to keep in shape by eating as healthy as I possibly can but I am by no means like strict. I'm not like, I don't eat clean all of the time, but I eat clean the majority of the time. So like Monday to Friday, usually give or take a bubble tea here and there. I'll eat clean, so I'll eat a lot of fruit and veg and meat, and that's kind of it. Then obviously I go to the gym as much as I can, as much as my schedule allows me to nowadays. I just try and be as healthy as possible. I don't really drink a lot, I don't smoke, um, and I tend to do a fairly even mix of like cardio and weight training, and I also try and do yoga as much as possible as well. Okay, so next question. The question is, what advice do you have to new YouTubers? I just like, thank you. My advice to YouTubers would be, I mean, I'm by no means a big YouTuber, like, I have been doing this five minutes in comparison to other people, so I, I don't really feel like I'm deserving of giving anyone advice. However, I would say, um, I would say, don't be scared. I know that there's, like, a lot of editing involved, but it's actually really easy to pick up, especially if I can do it. Um, don't let anyone discourage you, and just enjoy it. That's the main thing. Like, don't worry about the numbers too much. Just enjoy being creative and putting videos online and showing the world your personality, so that's definitely my advice. The next question is from Sahara Splash. Hey Lydia, so my question for you is, when did you really know that blogging was something that you want to do full time? Oh, good question. Okay, so when was blogging something that I knew that I wanted to do full time? Um, I think for like the first two years I had no idea that it was anything that could be done full time, um, and then all of a sudden I just sort of I really poured my heart and soul into it, so I, I used to take time out all the time, like months, I just wouldn't vlog, and then all of a sudden it was like, no, I'm not doing this by halves, I'm going to apply absolutely everything I have to this, and it just kind of worked out, and then it reached a point where I had a choice to make, did I want to do this full time, or did I want to go down a different career route, and I chose to put all my eggs in this basket, and I am so thankful that I did, but I don't think that it necessarily dawned on me that I wanted to be a full time blogger, I just... It just, I guess it just kind of happened. One thing that I always say is that blogging is a career opportunity, it's not a choice. Most people can't just wake up one day and be like, I'm gonna be a blogger, because it takes a lot of like time and investment and stuff like that, so. But it's always good to have options, like I have my degree and stuff like that to fall back on if this whole thing doesn't work out. <laughs> okay, next question. Zoe Binder, or Binder, Binder. Hi Lydia, um, I'm a student, so I'm just wondering if you could only spend money on one designer thing a month, what would it be? Because I need help working out what to buy. Ooh, <laughs> if I could only buy one designer thing a month, it would be a 
handbag because I've always been into handbags and they're kind of like my like I said before in my handbag uh, collection video they're my guilty pleasure I love them I love shoes as well and um, but I feel like shoes you do end up ruining at some point because they get a lot of wear and tear whereas handbags last a lifetime and they're just so beautiful and they change so much so if you're thinking about investing in a designer piece I definitely suggest making it a handbag and if you can Chanel because Chanel really do hold their value so that is the end of my first Snapchat Q&A and I've had so much fun. The questions were so good and I hope that you guys have enjoyed it as well. It was so nice seeing so many of your faces and just hearing your thoughts. It also gives me ideas for videos in the future, which is really good. But yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do that below as well. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.